Hello kids, my name is Swagata and today I am going to tell you a beautiful story about a little boy named Joe. The name of the story is Little Joe Was Worried. The story is written by Jerry Pinto and is illustrated by Henu, Kaveri Gopal Krishnan, Nilufar Vadia, Nishtha Gupta, Priya Kuria, Rajiv Varma, Banjara, Reshma Barve, Rijuta Ghati, and Ruchi Shah. So here it goes. Little Joe was worried. Everyone seemed to be running about the house that evening. He tried to ask his mom what was happening, but she didn't have time to answer. He tried to ask his dad what was happening, but he didn't have time to answer either. Everyone seemed to be rushing about the house looking for money. Even his sister Sarah was digging among her night clothes and taking out money. In all his five years, Joe had never seen the family so worried. When there was no one to ask, there was always Nana, his grandmother. She lived at the back of the house, in a little room filled with cupboards. She always had something in her cupboards because she never threw anything away. Ma, we don't need that wrapping paper, her daughter would say. You can tell the future now, Nana would say. And in a few weeks time, she would be making paper flowers out of the wrapping paper to decorate the church for August 15, which is both Independence Day and the Feast of the Assumption of the Virgin Mary into Heaven. This made it doubly special in little Joe's family. Nana never bought any birthday cards. She just made them. She would either draw and paint on old cardboards and write her own words or she would cut off the second page of a card and write on the back of it. Last year she had made a card for little Joe and wrote a poem just for him. This is the poem she wrote for Joe. Little Joe is only four but when he goes to school he is very cool. He gets on the bus and never makes a fuss. I can't wait to hear what he will do next year. And so when it was time to get on the bus to school, little Joe kept reciting his poem inside his head and he didn't cry. Now he went into Nana's room and climbed on to her bed. Nana was stitching and watching television. She used little bits of cloth from old clothes to make quilts. Nana, is that quilt for us? No, it's for the poor people at the line of control. They need things to keep them warm because winter is coming. Nana, are we also poor now? She looked at him now. Nana had a way of knowing what you were asking. Oh, this! She said, pointing to the television, which was saying that the 500 and 1000 rupee notes were no longer currency. She put down her stitching. They are all digging about and saying, we only have 240 rupees in the house, said little Joe, snuggling into her arms. That's not a lot of money, no. Oh, Nana said. Well, then it might be the time for Super Gran to ride to the rescue. She gave little Joe a tiny shove in the ribs. Go, get me the Bible, she said. Little Joe hopped off the bed and brought her the Bible. Let me see. Ask and you shall receive, Jesus says, she said. Here we go. And she opened the Bible and there was a hundred rupee note. Go, give this to your mom she said. Little Joe gave this to his mom who shouted with joy as if someone had given her a thousand rupee note. Only of course there were lots of thousand rupee notes on the table 
and they weren't making her very happy. Where did you get this from, little Joe? Nana gave it to me. The entire family went into Nana's room. She was holding a small jam jar. It was full of five rupee coins. You can have my gold coin collection, she said. The family laughed and settled onto the floor to count the coins. Now they had 440 rupees and that called for a celebration. Mum went to the kitchen and toasted some bread on the tawa and they had it with honey. Over the next few days, it was Nana's saved up money that ran the house. How come you have no 500 rupee notes? Little Joe asked her that night. You know, she said as her eyes drifted close. My mom used to say, take care of the pesa and the rupee will take care of it. And I think the 50 rupee note is so pretty, I always like to have a few around. When the coconut man came in the morning, Nana gave him four 10 rupee notes she had rolled up in a pair of socks. When the bread man came, Nana found six 5 rupee no coins at the bottom of her face. Of course, things went back to normal soon, but little Joe noticed that his mum never said, we don't need that when his nana tried to have something, save something for letter use. So this is the end of the story. So the moral of the story, what did we learn from the story? That we should never consider anything useless and throw it when we can save it for later. In emergency, we don't know what we can use and you know, what can be useful for us. So my little dear friends, I hope you like the story. Stay safe, stay good. Love you. Bye-bye.